Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. I'm your host, Danielle Teal, and if you missed last week's show where I talked to Moto America Super Stock 1000 rider Bobby Fong, you can go back and watch it at nextmotochampion.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel and never miss an episode again. The latest issue of Next Moto Champion magazine is out. We've got Cameron Bobier on the cover along with Sonoma Photo Review, the Instagram page, product spotlights, rider columns, and the fan favorite, the Umbrella Girl of the Month. You can download yours for free also at nextmotochampion.com. And now for the news. Let's start with a little MotoGP. At a soaking wet Misano, it was the number 93 Mark Marquez who reigned supreme. Danilo Petrucci and Marquez battled it out until the last lap when Marquez overtook him for the win and the 25 points that came along with it, giving him the championship lead once again. And while he and Andrea De Vicioso are actually tied for wins and points, Marquez is ahead thanks to having more second place finishes over Dovi. Let's take a look at your points in MotoGP after Misano. World Superbike recently announced that Yamaha's Michael Vandermark will be riding in MotoGP in Valentino Rossi's place at the Aragon Round. The 2014 World Supersport Champion will make his MotoGP debut with no prior testing on the Yamaha YZR-M1 September 24th. Meanwhile, World Superbike will return to racing September 15th in Portugal. Let's take a look at your current World Superbike point standings going into this weekend's race. American flat track in the Twins class, Jared Meese has clinched the Twins championship and he did so in front of his home crowd. He took the win and the title this past weekend at the Williams Grove Half Mile after winning his heat and semi and otherwise dominating the main. Meese went on to say that I wanted to be the guy to do everything on the Indian first. I wanted to dominate and we did. And after several red flags and his teammate and championship rival Brian Smith crashed out of the race, Meese did just that, wrapping up the title two rounds from the end with nine wins to his name in 2017. Congratulations, Jared Meese. Let's take a look at your AFT point standings with two rounds to go. Last but certainly not least, Moto America was at New Jersey Motorsports Park over the weekend and crowned two new champions. Yoshimura Suzuki's Tony Elias wrapped up his first Moto America Superbike Championship after winning Superbike Race 1 over teammate Roger Hayden with three races to go in the season, making it his ninth win of 2017. In Superstock 1000, Yamalube Westby Racing's Matthew Skultz also clinched the championship with one round to go. Congratulations to them both, and while we're at it, congratulations to Kyle Wyman for finishing second place in Superbike Race 2. Today we have your 2017 Superbike champion Tony Elias on to talk about his Moto America journey and taking the 2017 championship. And on that note, we have your Dunlop race highlights brought to you by Moto America.
now let's take a look at your point standings going into the final round. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. When only the highest level of quality and performance will do, it's TAW Performance. As the exclusive North American distributor for brands such as Brembo, Litec, and Marchesini, TAW Performance is globally trusted as the source for premium motorcycle parts. Kappa tire warmers for roto brake pads and Scorpion exhausts are reserved for motorcycle riders who want the best and will never settle for inferior products. These riders choose the trusted brands used in MotoGP, World Superbike, and Moto America. These exotic performance parts are now available on TAWPerformance.com. And that's your dirt. If you're looking for a way to make your motorcycle look better than ever with just a few aftermarket additions, then take a look at what John Boucher and Driven Racing have for you. Since 2005, Driven Racing has been making metal that moves you. You probably don't think much about your bar ends while riding your motorcycle, but Driven Racing wants to change that. We're proud to bring you Driven Racing's gravity line of bar ends and mirrors. Proper bar end weight reduces unwanted vibration and makes for a more comfortable ride. And if you've used factory mirrors lately, you've probably had a better view of your shoulder than the traffic behind you. At Driven Racing, we believe that form follows function, and with the gravity bar ends and mirrors, you won't have to sacrifice one to get the other. When it comes to a good looking bike, it's the details that make the difference. And with Driven Racing's new gravity bar ends, your bike's gonna look better than ever. The sharp lines and bright anodized colors are gonna be a compliment to any bike. The all new three piece bar end is elegantly machined at a 6061 billet aluminum. With an outside diameter of 33 millimeters, a combined weight of 0.3 pounds, laser etched lettering, and a unique taper design, all for less than $50. These bar ends are designed to fit bikes with hollow bars, but they'll fit into most OEM bikes using our list of bike-specific adapters sold separately. Our brand new gravity mirror is packed with features and styling cues that you won't find anywhere else. The 3D tool path on the back of the mirror gives you a look like no other. It features a high-end, made-in-America, blue-tinted convex glass that offers a wide field of view. The stainless steel pivots allow for a wide range of adjustment, or you can flip it in for running in tight traffic. The mirrors measure three inches in diameter and have an elegant teardrop shape. The plastic bushing inside the ball system allows constant pressure, smooth, glove-friendly adjustment, and a long life without wear. A steal for under $130, and both bar ends and mirrors come in five anodized vibrant colors, black, blue, red, gold, and silver. For more information on this product or other Driven Racing products, check us out at DrivenRacing.com. There you'll find a full product catalog chain calculator and contact info. That's DrivenRacing.com. All right, we'll be right back with our guest, 2017 Moto America Superbike champ, Tony Elias.
This is an actual slab of saddle gel removed from a saddleman's seat. This is a picture of your favorite winding road in a glass frame, and it's part of our test to see how Saddleman Gel Core technology handles some of the jarring, harsh impacts the road can deliver. A glass picture frame would never stand a chance against a baseball bat, just like your tailbone doesn't stand a chance against that pothole you hit at 60 miles an hour. But when the impact is absorbed by Saddleman's Gel Core technology, your picture and your tailbone are protected. When you conduct the same impact test with the slab of foam you find in most stock and aftermarket motorcycle seats, it's easy to see that when it comes to absorbing impact, foam will fail. For the ride you deserve, it's Saddleman Seats with Gel Core Technology. We're back and this interview is brought to you by TAW Performance. He took his 10th win of the season over the weekend at New Jersey Motorsports Park, making it the 16th of his Superbike career, but he also clinched the 2017 Moto America Superbike Championship. He's a Moto2 World Champion and now a Moto America Superbike Champ as well. He's the number 24 and our good friend, Yoshimira Suzuki's Tony Elias. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be with you again. Oh, happy to have you back. We had you on last year. Uh, congratulations on the Superbike Championship. Obviously, you're in New York City right now. How did you celebrate your championship? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm so happy for everything, how it, everything uh, treats us this, this season. And I made the promise to my family like four or five years ago. We. We, the dream, our dream was uh, came all the family here in, in New York and now it's possible and was a promise and now it's true. We are enjoying a lot and it's a special to be here because yesterday was 9-11 and it's a special atmosphere, yes. So yesterday um, you guys went and saw the monument. You did a lot of sightseeing like tourists. So talk about the championship winning race. Three races from the end, were you ready to take the championship then? Well, uh, New Jersey is not the best track for me, but I really wanted to win because I really wanted to uh, win this championship. I didn't want to, to wait on for Sunday and we worked a lot since the first day with my, my team, choosing the tires, trying to the, the find the best setup. And we did it, we did a perfect job. I think the bike right now, the last weekend was the best weekend. Uh, we found another step of setup, which worked really good. And that uh, gave us um, a good opportunity, you know, opportunity to have a strong pace. And when I could start the race in a good position, I passed Josh Hayes and Roger. Uh, I really wanted to be in the first position all the race. Uh, do my pace and at the end win and I could open some gap but at the end Roger catch me back I was a little afraid but at the end I, I could win and well it is the, the we get the, the objective we wanted at the beginning of the season and this is thank you thank, this is thanks to all my staff my technician Daisuke all my mechanics, uh, our boss, uh, Don Sagakura and Pat Alexander. And I'm, I'm so proud of all of this, all this group. And you went on to make it an even better race weekend by making it a double win weekend. Um, but let's talk about your season. It's been somewhat of a dream season for you. Um, you never finished worse than second in any race except for the one that you got crashed out of. But let's talk about your season. You said you've never had this much regularity in one season in your career. Talk about it. Well, I never had uh, this regularity. I'm really surprised about this. Uh, but, but I have to say, I never had this situation before. This team is amazing. When you have a great team and you have a great bike, uh, the status, official status with the factory uh, is, is amazing. The things are different. When you order something, when you need to solve some problem, uh, always they are there to, to, to work for me, to solve this. And this makes us uh, this regularity. We're, we work well, we control this bike, the setup. When we have problems, we solve the situations very quickly. 
and it's really important because it's the first year of this new GSXR. At the beginning, it was so difficult, but we did an, an amazing job. Um, my my team, since the guys from the team and also in the factory, it has been uh, perfect. It has been amazing. So talk about that then, developing a new bike while trying to focus on a championship. That had to be difficult, but what were some of the major improvements you saw from the bike last year to this year? It has been a lot. Uh, the engine is much more smooth, much more easy to, to control um, with a lot of power and a lot of torque. With uh, much better electronics where we can control every single part of the track is is amazing. Uh, last year we didn't have these these options, and the most important thing also is the frame. New frame is better. The bike is smaller. It's my better for is is much better for my size. And but was too much stuff at the beginning. Too much stuff to 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 work together. Uh, also, a um, lot of things to develop. A lot of problems to solve, and it was so difficult. I remember the first test in Malaysia. We were very, very worried because we had a lot of problems, more than what we thought before. But okay, with calm and work, we, we solve everything. And at the end, it has been an amazing bike. We never had a failure. It's, the team did a perfect job. and. We, we are proud of this new GSXR. Well, it's been a long time coming for Suzuki. We've seen Yamaha's dominate ever since 2009 when Maladin was the last guy to get the title on Suzuki, on a Suzuki, and it's been Yamaha's ever since. How does that feel for you to be the guy who ended the Yamaha reign? You finally turned the corner for Suzuki. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy and it's important, very important for Suzuki, but also very important for me because um, when when you are not official, everybody can talk about you, but not in the best way. And I had to hear many things about, first of all, about my riding style. I start to, to, to ride with the elbow down, with my body completely out of bike. And then one day, Mark Marquez arrived, do the same thing, and, and right now he's five-time world champion, no? That was the, the first thing I had to listen during all, all my career. Second thing, uh, it has been, I was not a good test rider, no? And always I, I knew that was not true. And just the things you need is have a good team, have a good bike, have a good support. And I had a lot of experience because I start in one to five, to 50, then MotoGP, back Moto2. Then back to MotoGP, super bikes, I ride Yamahas, Hondas, Ducaris, Aprilias. Uh, I see many things, how to solve many problems. When you are in satellite teams, you don't have the support from the factory and you have to find the solutions by yourself with your, with your team. And that helped me a lot. No? Then when we arrived in Suzuki, new bike, and when everybody was a little bit worried, said, okay, guys, don't worry, be calm. We will solve the problems, we, we have experience. And it's, it's what we did, step by step, um, following my indications. The team is so strong. They listen and understand my, my request and Roger's request. And at the end, we, they, they prepare an amazing bike for us. That, that give us that, that gives back the Suzuki, the, Suzu, the, the championship for Suzuki again. And I'm, I'm happy no, for, for all this, for me and for them. And I think this is a present for, for all. Good surprise for me, good surprise for them. And well, I hope this one is the first one of of many in the future. Very good. It's the first one since 2009, though, and proving all those skeptics wrong. You're a great development rider, obviously a great rider um, in your own 
with your accomplishments that you accomplished <laughs> prior to this and now this championship. But let's talk a little bit about your Moto America career. Two years ago when we saw you at Super Prestigio in Vegas, you were considering retiring from racing. Now how good does it feel to know that you made a good call and stayed on the bike? Uh, well, it was uh, really important when I arrived last year, I, I was in a difficult situation, but it's amazing how in 600 days the situation can change like this and we can win this, this championship. Uh, when I arrived, I didn't have experience with the tracks, with uh, in this championship, in, and we did an amazing job uh, as a team. They helped me a lot to 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 be more fully for my for more familiar with this situation and it was difficult the first year and I missed I, I was I, I did some mistakes uh, and we didn't control some situations but we learned a lot from from the past and this year it has been so different that that's why second year you know every situation the team know more uh, the things i like and that uh, make us a very incredible situation so tony um, i was gonna say you're a moto 2 world champ moto gp race winner but what do you have to say about our series it's a it's a good strong series when you say it's a it's a super strong series um I've been really surprised because when when you are fighting there with Josh Hayes, with Cameron Bouvier, with Roger Hayden, and you try to to work hard all weekend to 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 prepare one race, where my idea is always is to take an open song gap, and it's impossible. Every race you have one of them or all together just behind or in front of you and you never can win with with some distance always we win no races or we lose races for zero 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 two it's, a, it's amazing they are strong strong riders and what i want to know what i want is the rest of the world know american riders are so strong and this moto america championship is so strong and it, it's hard, but I think Moto America is working really good. You said the competition on the track is really hard, but off the track, it's like a family, correct? Yeah, the, the, what I like this championship is, for example, compared to MotoGP or Superbikes, uh, there are, everybody is, is like a rival between mechanics, technicians, riders, it's like a war. But here is, is nice because we have also a big war, but the war is inside the track. And the good thing is outside the track, everybody's more, more happy, more, we are more friends. And well, sometimes it's also difficult, but, uh, but this is nice. And for example, last week I could uh, speak with Cameron. I wish him good luck for the surgery. I received some message from him. Congratulations, congratulations, Tony, and all these nice things. And it's, this is amazing. Also with Roger, I have a very good relationship with Josh. All are rivals, but outside we can be good friends. Very good, Tony. Well, we loved having you in our paddock, and we've loved having you for the last two years. You just add this other element on the track of excitement that we've needed and that the fans have wanted. Um, but off the track, you're like an all-American Spaniard. I don't, what is it about American culture that you really embrace that makes you really want to be here living and racing in the States? Well, um, for me, it has been so nice. Um, for me, when I, when I was a, a, little, a little kid, I had a big American flag in my, in my bedroom. And when I saw the, the American riders from Supercross, uh, when rainy Kevin Swans, I was amazed. No, now I'm here, living this life is amazing. I love this country. And what I like most is when, when uh, we can listen the national anthem before the races, uh, how 
is the the Americans feel the patriotism for for this country. I love that. I I think my country have to learn a lot of things from you, and I feel a lot of pleasure to to be here and to to feel all these uh, big emotions. And now um, win this championship is amazing. I I can have a number one plate which. For me, it was a dream way since I was a little kid. And well, it's amazing. Thank well, you. Thank you, America. Oh, very good. Very good, Tony. Well, we're happy to have you here. We've loved watching you race uh, and contend with some of our fastest guys in the Superbike class. Uh, you now have 16 Superbike wins to your name, and it ties you with Wayne Rainey, who is one of your childhood heroes, like you said. So congratulations on your success here in America. Congratulations on your Superbike championship, and best of luck. <laughs> and Barber, you still have another round to go, but you've locked it up. Congratulations, Tony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Let's win, let's win again. <laughs> let's win again, he said. All right, Tony. We'll let you go. We know you've got some family stuff to do there in New York City. Enjoy New York. Good luck at Barber, and we'll talk to you soon. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Big kiss and big hug. Bye. Very good. All right, guys, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Thanks, Tony. Since 2005, Driven Racing has been making metal that moves you. Made right here in the USA, Driven Racing products are known for their design, innovation, and attention to detail. What started as a chain and sprocket company has grown into a global brand that is sold through a worldwide network of dealers and distributors who make these products available to Driven fans everywhere. segment we like to call the next moto champion moto minute where we get you up to speed on the latest and greatest motorcycles on the market in a minute today we're looking at the 2017 suzuki gw250 suzuki says it's an intelligent motorcycle in a class of its own this one has style and affordability so first let's talk about the style suzuki says it has lightning fast low end and mid-range power from its 248 cc liquid cooled two-cylinder engine a six-speed transmission with gear ratios well mated to the engine output, further improving low to mid-range power delivery. The semi-double cradle chassis is designed to provide ample support for a variety of riding styles, and the telescopic front forks make for smoother tracking up front, whether riding the rough city streets or fast open roads. There's a five-way adjustable brake lever, hydraulic disc brakes on the front and rear to help control the strong three-spoke 17-inch aluminum wheels and give you added confidence. You'll also find a large analog tachometer with digital gear position indicator flanked by a digital LCD speedometer, odometer, twin trip meter, clock and fuel gauge readout, service indicator light, plus LED alert indicator. All of this is wrapped up nicely in striking bodywork that makes an aggressive statement for you and your motorcycle. Now for affordability. You can have all of this for a base MSRP of just over $4,000. For more information, visit SuzukiCycles.com. And that's this week's Moto Minute. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. 
Find them all at woodcraft-cfm.com. Thank you, Tony Eunice, and congratulations again. We'll have more for you, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and American flat track coverage. Don't forget to join the over 10,000 others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join our newsletter and get this show and more straight to your inbox each Saturday. We look forward to a great season with you, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion.